and ready to just set up the stage for our next speaker, who is called Ramona, and uh, she is a developer at ACP, a Vue.js core team member and passionate about all things in the web, especially Vue.js. I share this passion with you, Ramona. How are you? I'm good, good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, and her talk is about something that we all like, right? When we like when magic just happens, all of the sudden, it's awesome. When you install that plugin and everything just works. But it's even better when we actually know what's going on under the hood and we know how the all magic is going to be done and is being done. So that's what Ramona is here today to tell us, uh, to give us a little deep dive into ViewPress and we will let us know everything that happens behind the scenes of stat static site generators, uh, which technologies are used, and also some interesting features that can make the ViewPress implementation very, very powerful. So Ramona, your talk is recorded and uh, you will be here back after your talk to yes. answer all the questions you guys And also in the chat. <laughs> Oh, okay, great. Uh, leave some questions for after, okay? <laughs> so, so that I don't miss any question again. I'm sorry for the last time. And uh, welcome everyone for the talk explaining the ViewPress magic. Hello, everybody. Thanks a lot for uh, coming to my session. Uh, looking into ViewPress magic and explaining some of um, this uh, magic. Uh, so hello there everyone, uh, my name is Ramona Buscovanu, uh, I'm a senior developer in ACP and uh, you can find me on social media with codes of RAM. I'm not very active, but just in case you want to uh, see some of the things I'm doing, uh, you find me there. Uh, some fun things about me, I am um, very into cheese and wine together and separated. Uh, it doesn't matter <laughs> the smell, the form, the color. Uh, and also because of the coronavirus, I got very into plants, as you can see behind me. Um, you can call me a plant lady by now, because I'm very proud of, uh, of this actually. So <laughs> I'm not ashamed. <laughs> so um, let's move into why we are all here, uh, to look into ViewPress magic and why I consider it magic. Um, you know, and explain uh, a bit of it. Of it. Uh, what I'll try to cover today, um, it kind of stays into these lines. Uh, what it is, you press the view press magic. Uh, why use it? Why I consider um, you should look into it if you never used it. And uh, we're also looking into how does it work. And in like real life scenarios, in like a real <laughs> conference, I will have been asking you how many of you used ViewPress in your project or uh, you tried it or you looked into it and you'll be like raising your hands. Uh, hands. So we'll just write this into the chat and I'll see there and see, you know, how many of uh, you actually uh, used it or uh, tried it. So uh, sorry if you'll hear any noise behind, my neighbors are renovating, so it's not something I can control, you know, neighbors, I guess. So um, another like bit of disclaimer, when I <laughs> submitted the, the session, like many times, a uh, long time ago, um, I kind of had an envisioned different plans for these. Uh, lots of time has passed, and lots of events have happened. I kind of slightly move a bit from, uh, that's why I'm, um, just in case you know, uh, you're wondering some of the things that are maybe aligned. But let's jump into it. So what what actually uh, is ViewPress? Because maybe you know, we need to start with this. Um, and this is actually the definition taken from uh, the website, which it says is a minimalistic uh, static site generator. We, some of you may uh, be familiar already with this, or maybe used some other ones, because they are very popular at the moment. Um, it has a view um, uh, teaming system and a plugin API, and you know in Vue ecosystem we love plugins, uh, but also has a default team optimized for writing technical documentation. So basically you're experiencing the um, uh, dev um, view experience uh, 
um, in this uh, landscape. But also what I find it, you know, let's go to magic word. I'm probably gonna use this um, many times because, you know, in Vue we have lots of magic. <laughs> and also, of course, we have in uh, Vue Press too, um, that you can write uh, your teams, you can uh, use uh, view components into um, Markdown. I'll go more uh, into this later on. But if this is not magic, like what else can it be, you know? And um, we go like, why use it? You know, like even why use it um, a static site or like what you uh, using ViewPress? Because you know, static sites are great, and why not use this one even like for our documentation? Because you know, ViewPress was built with this in mind to uh, be optimal for writing technical documentation. Because us as developers, sometimes we forget about this aspect about you know being uh, thoughtful about documentation. But maybe sometimes we don't have the right tools for this, and maybe here's where uh, ViewPress comes and kind of help us. And why not have good um, SEO for our project, you know, and want to have good performance uh, security. And also, you know, static sites like actually greener are helping the planet. <laughs> so if you want to know about this, like uh, Debbie has a very good talk and uh, I can link it in the chat if you, if you want. So this is kind of like the whys, more or less, but like why, what makes ViewPress, you know, magic and you know, I keep saying this. So let's actually look into that and analyze some of the things. Well, the default team, it's specially built for writing technical documentation. So we're already writing Markdown, right? Even for GitHub or for any other tools. So we're already using that part. And I like making it prettier and make it more like user-friendly. So this is where the default team comes in. And it's also um, good from the side of view, like writing it as developer, it's, um, let's say, easier from that side too. Um, and the default team, it's great because if we take a look at this, uh, it already comes like with navigation and it's uh, thought about it and like search, uh, header, um, title, and um, like this side um, bars and code blocks. So all the things that you kind of need in your docu uh, in your um, technical documentation. So there, it's already taken care in the in the default team. And you may be familiar with this from the ViewPress website <laughs> or also from uh, the view documentation. Okay, that's not the default team. It's more of like custom one because there are lots of things happening in there. But more or less, you'll see like the search, um, the side um, bar, uh, navigation and uh, so on. And also they have these amazing things that are, are called Markdown extensions because you know we're, we're, we're uh, writing Markdown and these uh, things are you know making our life easier. So let's look into some of these, some of these that I find them useful, nice, you'll see also important. <laughs> so from matter, you may know and all markdown files come with the front matter. Uh, and of course that happens also in ViewPress because we're writing um, markdown, right? And this follows like the YAML, you know, structure, convention, whatever you want to call it. And which is great is that you can actually access this front matter and um, I don't know, do things with it, send information like the title, or you can use it for customizing the default team it depends on all the things you want. And what's also great when you're writing uh, and using ViewPress for your technical documentation is that you can act, actually can use the view dev tools to um, debug your uh, documentation site. So you'll write uh, things and you'll uh, see in there and you'll see also like the front matter and all these uh, variables, like global variables. It has GitHub style, uh, style tables. So which is great about this is that, you know, like we already write are writing tables and something, but you don't need actually to spend the time to like style them. These are like little things like dots here, uh, which means it's uh, centered. Uh, the dots uh, on the right means like it's right center. Just like small things like this that you don't need to spend more time in you know, actually implementing them, which from my perspective, it saves you a lot of time and, you know, nerves <laughs> too. 
And of course, a very important thing are the emojis. So it has a built-in emoji library. Because you know, we can use emojis in our documentation as are used like wisely and uh, you know nicely put because main, main, sometimes too many are you know disturbing from um, the whole information but using emojis maybe our documentation uh, could be friendlier for uh, users and I like emojis as you can see. Um, it also has syntax highlighting uh, in code blocks and it's great because like why would you build your one? And there are already like other li libraries out there. It's also great here is like, you can also highlight the line. For example, you put like here in the brackets, the line and uh, that line will be highlighted, which I think is very great because sometimes maybe you have like code examples that you wanna um, like share to your users. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice way of um, helping your users using, I don't know, your product, your uh, library or whatever you have. And also the most mind blowing thing is view and markdown. You can use um, components, interpolations, uh, directives, all the things you can think of, you can use them in markdown. And th this is amazing because you can do like very uh, dynamic examples. Uh, for example, we uh, used ViewPress to document our component library and it's very, it was very great because you could do examples and um, you know, let people actually play with it and uh, things like that. And I think it, it, it was very great and it was very good uh, use case for us. Um, also on how this uh, works, ViewPress uses Markdown it uh, as a compiler for, uh, you know, to render the Markdown into HTML. Uh, and, also like Markdown has lots of plugins and things that you can use. So you can even plug those, even those are even uh, though are not, let's say part of the, the view press. Um, and how it looks like if you wanna uh, plug some of those extra uh, things, um, of course you're using uh, like a configuration uh, file. So you're just like gonna require it uh, here. So I don't think it's like a very complicated process, like it could be done by uh, everyone. Um, and also, like, why would you want to use ViewPress? You know, did you hear how easy it is to use? I know I don't like to use the easy <laughs> word with lots of technical things, but what's great about ViewPress is like, you don't even have to be a view developer to actually use it. You don't even have to know much of, you know, the view and view ecosystem because um, I just write your markdown, right, and do like a bit of setups. And for example, in my case, we have people that are not uh, developers that are actually using it to uh, document stuff because they just got the hang of it. Um, so how do you start? Um, one way is to use the scaffolding, uh, let's, let's call it scaffolding <laughs> um, project. So you just use Ryan, uh, Yarn Create. And another way, it's you, you install it uh, locally on, in your project. Uh, is it recommended to use Yarn instead of uh, NPM? It's still working with NPM, but like it's more recommended to, to use Yarn. Also in the old times, old times, it's like, yeah, it's been 100 years. Uh, <laughs> um, there was also an option to install it globally. It's not recommended anymore. So, you know, just for you to know. Uh, also, if you don't wanna work, um, you know, locally. There's also an option to, to use God Sandbox. There's a template for ViewPress there. So that's also great because I don't know, maybe you wanna send it to one of your colleagues for um, test run and see how it works. It's a great way because, you know, sometimes when you keep installing stuff on your computer, it gets, you get, I don't know, problems or something. <laughs> God knows. Um, but you know, we've been talking a lot. So uh, let's look also uh, at the demo. So um, let's make maybe like text bigger. Okay, this should be, oops. Okay, this should be okay. So all I did here, I already ins installed ViewPress in my um, project. It's just like an empty project because I didn't want you to see how <laughs> the files are like loading and loading. And uh, one thing we'll do, okay, I will not use a command line because I don't want you <laughs> to see like my, my folders and things because uh, I don't with my users and things. So what I'll do here, I'll do like a uh, readme md file. This is all you need for um, your ViewPress site. And we'll add um, a title, 
uh, hello view day 2020. I'll save it and you'll see like it, it already like um, has, um, has a hot reloading. If I go back here and we'll open the local host, you'll see like I already got my um, um, text. And if I look here, this one here, you'll see it already has like a search bar, so it comes in with, uh, with that. But there are lots of things that you can actually do. I'll not put this side by side because I have only one screen in Steiny, and there's also like lots of things going on. So don't wanna get confused. Uh, for example, there are things that you can do, uh, like let's say header one. It comes like with a table of, uh, you know, of course, uh, I can spell when people are looking at me because you know that's how. Uh, okay, you just write T O C, and it brings your uh, header, which I think it's so great because <laughs> you don't have to take care of any of uh, those uh, things. Uh, so if you want to write more a uh, configuration file, you have to create a ViewPress folder where inside the ViewPress folder you will add um, a config that js file which is just the module that exports file and here you'll write uh, all your things like i don't title uh okay. hello there i do find that sometimes there are like problems with the hot reloading and I, I, I don't think now it worked for example like if i refresh it, it still didn't work like i don't have it here so we'll have to stop this and Yarn start, I'll go back because I don't want to <laughs> see my folders and stuff. I know it's silly. Okay, we'll just wait a bit for it to be built. Okay, it's back. And you see, now it's here. Um, I, I do think it's a problem. I think there's an issue open there, so maybe it'll be fixed uh, soon with the hot reloading because sometimes it is annoying, I have to say. But there are lots of things that you can do here, uh, like you can do a uh, team. Uh, config and you do like nav uh, and this one is an array um, of let's say um, text I don't know let's say config config and then uh, we'll have to, to say where is link let's say config and this will be like a folder I don't have it now so I'll just go and create it uh, config and inside config I'll do a readme md and let's put the title here config okay and going back you see like I have it here and I can navigate it and I can go back so this is already like built in which is uh so great <laughs> like you don't have to do anything uh but I was saying there are lots of other things that you can do. Uh, for example, there's like a, a tip container and you can do like, this is, oops, this is a tip. Okay, so like see, it, it already comes like nicely. You can also hide the title, title. See, and you get like the, the title of the header. Um, what are other things that you uh, can do? Um, you can link it straight to the page, you know, like the normal uh, link stuff. Um, you can use you in um, in uh, Markdown and how you can do it. Uh, all you have to do because Upress follows the um, uh, convention over configuration. So if you create your uh, components folder here and you create a component, it will know to uh, make this like global available for you to use it. So you do like a hello view and we create like a view component and do like a div and say hello component and all you have to do is you have to add it here and I don't think it's gonna work I think we'll have to restart the server um, again I was saying, I think if there's a problem with the, with the hot uh, reloading and hopefully it will be uh, fixed soon. So if I do it, okay, you'll, you'll see it now. So you even can do like uh, interpolations, uh, I don't know, one plus one, very complicated ones, you'll see. 
that's a very complex that. <laughs> so this is kind of like a very quickly some of the things. And you'll see like I didn't do anything, I didn't much, did much uh, configuration and I already have all these uh, building uh, things. And you can also like write uh, front matter and I don't know, add titles like sidebars and sign outs and all those things, but I'll not go more into because I can see the time it's already uh, going. And I was saying, as far as more the convention of our configuration, so um, you kind of have to follow some of the things like in the project structure, which is not complicated because you have just create your files or, um, you know, or folders or whatever you want, which is great. You, you can also create like, um, um, as you've seen folders, because you, in your documentation, if you already create folders, like to put the things in, you know, to structure them, it's great because in, in ViewPress, you already can link them uh, like this, you know, like just have the folder, have the readme as, because you know, it, it's considered as an index. And also you can uh, have like uh, styles, you know, to override some of the global ones or create uh, some uh, custom ones for uh, your use, depending on, you know, your brand colors or whatever you want. Uh, do you see? But let's go into how does it work? Because uh, there's not much time left. <laughs> so um, in, in fact, ViewPress is a, start, um, is a single page application. And I think this is what makes it kind of unique in the uh, static site generators um, pool. Uh, it is view, view router, and webpack for uh, the build uh, process. And I think it's kind of great, you know, because all these things. But let's look into, uh, I made a very ugly diagram, so don't judge the colors. So like, you know, in the whole like static site generator thing, uh, I was saying you have a teaming system, but what's great about this is like you have the default team, but you can also have external teams. And for example, there's also like an official uh, ViewPress blog team. So if you want to do a blog using uh, ViewPress, you can do that. And also, uh, the plugin system, you have like internal plugins and you also have external plugins from the community. But what's also great is actually the internal ones are like the ones that are applied in within um, the default team, but also like um, in the core of ViewPress. And there's also like a layout system, which was like decoupled from the default team, which is also great because you can do like lots of things with this. Um, but you know, thinking about it and looking at it, but what you do if you don't like the default team? Like what, what are your options? Well, there are plenty of, <laughs> you can find a, a team that you like developed by uh, the community. And I put the URL here if you wanna go and look because there are some actually great ones or you can try the blog team and you can just um, add it in your uh, config file that I was uh, showing to you. So that's kind of it. And you can use that team. And of course, maybe the team comes with also like configuration that you have to add. So that's kind of it. But if you didn't find anything that, you know, fits your brand colors, your brand need, or like your project needs, you can create your own team and it's actually fun. And as I was saying, um, you know, it's convention over configuration. You kind of have to follow the, the, the folder structure again here. So you'll have to put everything in a team folder. I do forget this sometimes and I'm wondering why my custom things are not working. I don't know, rock and mistake. Uh, <laughs> um, and the most important actually file in here and what's mandatory when you create a team is the layout file. So you either put in like in the um, layouts, um, I think it also works if you put it outside of the, the layouts um, folder. So that's that's kind of it, you know, and then it, you start creating your teams and you uh, develop your uh, your stuff, you know, with your colors that you want. You can also do team inheritance, which I think it's also uh, great because, um, I don't know, you maybe want to change just one file from the default team. So there's no need for you to eject and do, do, you know, lose all those updates or anything. You just create a new, let's say, create a new file and you, like you inherit the, the one, the default team and you just, you know, change or add the, the file. Um, and you'll get, you know, the goodies. I think it's still in beta. I'm not very sure I didn't use it honestly. So, but I think it's, it's quite a great uh, addition in, uh, nice feature. You can also uh, do overwrites, like in the style uh, palette stylus, you can overwrite the uh, global colors 
And uh, you can also write your own, um, let's say, global styles <laughs> and use them in the index uh, style. That's kind of like custom uh, stuff that you can do. Um, it's using it's using like stylus, but uh, in the stylus uh, it accepts the the CSS syntax. So don't worry about that. So you don't need to like learn anything uh, new, which I think it's also great. But if none of these are like actually fitting for for your case, you can actually eject the default theme and you know be free to all the things you want. Just worrying you not get any of the updates. So I think that's just like a type of bummer. Uh, also, let's talk about plugins because I was saying, you know, it has like a theming system. We talked about the theme or things that you can do. Uh, but what about the plugins? Because, you know, in the Vue ecosystem, we love plugins. And of course, uh, Vuepress also has some plugins. Um, and these are some of them. <laughs> and I think it's very useful because, you know, there's to make your um, site or documentation site uh, better. You have like back to top, uh, there's like one for the blog, you know, to help you move like Google Analytics. Last update, which I think is very great. It, uh, it reads the uh, git commit uh, timestamps and uh, it shows you when the uh, page was um, last updated based on that time, uh, like pagination, search, you know, cause I was saying, I was showing you the sh search uh, that I didn't actually demo it, <laughs> but <laughs> it works great. You can also like plug um, Algolia search or some other things that you want in there, which I think is also great. But uh, looking a bit of uh, some architecture stuff, I uh, got this picture from the website. <laughs> but I think it's also, uh, at least it helped me to understand how are kind of working. Because you have, you know, the the team side and you have the user project. And if you look, they all have like configuration files and plugins and they, um, I'm talking to the plugin API. But if you look at more in detail here, what's important on the user project side, it's actually the markdowns files, you know, I was showing to you. And also on the team, as I was saying, is the layout uh, components. And these are the most important thing. And then when you move into like the, the build process, I um, did say that it's using Webpack for the build um, phase, which is great because you can add and, uh, you know, change stuff. Uh, and also, um, you know, see here, like has the uh, Markdown it uh, plugging in Markdown it uh, um, library. I'm losing words, <laughs> um, but let's move on. One important thing and aspect is uh, you can write your own plugin. And I think this is uh, actually great because if you don't find anything, um, you know, from the community on from the um, official ones, you can write your own one and it's not very complicated. I linked it here on uh, from the website, how uh, it can be done. But did I convince you yet? Like there's lots of magic in ViewPress or not? Because there's just one more thing that I can show. Uh, it's markdown slots, you know, because we have slots in view and we have markdown slots in view press. And I think this is actually very great. Uh, so how does it work? Um, think of the, the, the markdown files here as providers for the layout component. So let's say like you have here like data source for the, the layouts. Um, and the layouts are actually consuming those um, data sorts, uh, sources. So you can have like lots of things in the front matter and then just little you can do in the layout component about, um, you know, customizing what's in the, in, what's in the ma markdown based on the um, front matter data. But here's where the, the um, markdown slots are actually helpful because uh, I don't know, maybe you have like a very fixed type of layout, I don't know, right and left, uh, and you can't like do much with the content um, stuff, you know, slot, default slot, let's call it default slot. So if, if, if we look at how you can do it, it's, you know, just this way, you create the slot and the name, uh, and then in the layout, uh, you just reference it with the slot key. And you also have like the default on the content here that you can access. That's actually the whole content of the, um, the markdown file. But do you want to know more about uh, ViewPress? There are lots of resources online uh, that probably can explain it better than I can do. Um, 
going to check them out. There's also like an awesome tool uh, here, uh, which was developed by someone in the community. You can go and get the ViewPress teams and ViewPress plugins, and you can actually go and explore and you know read more about them and try them and do whatever you want. <laughs> so that's kind of it from my side. Thank you so much for uh, listening and uh, being part of my uh, talk. And also thank you, View Day, for um, picking me to, to speak today. So thanks, everyone. If you have questions, please uh, put them in the chat. Or I don't know, if you want to share something or talk about plants, I can also talk about plants. <laughs> thank you. And we are back live. Ramona, thank you so much for your video. Such a good talk. Thank you. Thank you, too. Such an honor. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, little question here. Uh, what about the view tree support in ViewPress? Thanks for asking. <laughs> That's actually kind of work in progress. There's a working prototype on ViewPress Next. So on GitHub, if anyone wants to check it out, it's there. Nice, and people can contribute as well, I assume. Of course, yeah, and give feedback. <laughs> yes, that's awesome. And I have a curiosity question. From all the amazing features from Fieldpress, which one is like ultimate your favorite? Oh my God, the sidebars, <laughs> like just, <laughs> just to have everything and be able to navigate, you know, between all folders and stuff, that's a game changer for me. <laughs> And from what you said, it's super simple to do because it is, it's just yes. like this and it's going to be ready. So yeah. that's amazing. And we got another question. Uh, how would you approach uh, internationalization with the ViewPress? Actually, it has built in uh, internal. I can't say the word, but it has it. I <laughs> <Built in. laughs> There's a lot of translated in there. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, uh, it's actually built in, and I think it's very well documented too. If it's not, you can also look at how the ViewPress documentation works because it has like uh, English and Chinese uh, translation. Okay, that's nice. Uh, I was uh, stopped by another curiosity as well uh, related to accessibility. Uh, how does it work with screen readers and everything when you have code snippets and the navigation? Is it supported? Some of those are. Um, on the default team, there are still problems. And I did see from the community, people are really looking into accessibility and trying to fix. Because, for example, some of the drop downs weren't very accessible. But uh, recently, I think it was one of the PRs from community coming in and were fixing actually some of those things. So I'll say. With the help of the community, it's getting better and better. Yeah, definitely. We need to help each other and uh, make sure that other developers uh, can access no matter how, how it is. Uh, another, another question, I know you mentioned it somewhere, but maybe not deeply. Uh, does ViewPress have a SEO support? Yeah, you can uh, put like the um, extra meta tags into. I know there are uh, some kind of issues that uh, it's not like perfect, for example, as in Next or other uh, frameworks. It's still like, let's say, work in progress and people are like trying to improve this. But there is, uh, being a static site generator, it does have a good SEO. And also like you can put uh, SEO and you can also put like extra tags in the front matter and stuff like that. Uh -huh, to help you, cool. you know, for the Google. <laughs> <laughs> to the search engines to actually find you and your documentation. Yeah. That, that's very nice. Um, I'm not sure if we have any more question coming in right now. But in any ways, I think you asked if uh, you convinced us to actually yeah. use your press. <laughs> you convinced me. I'm going to yeah. try to do it. I have a few projects on GitHub and I'm going to try to implement a decent documentation that's just not that boring read me, you know? Something <laughs> and put colorful. emojis. <laughs> yes, yes. Problem with emojis is the screen readers, though they still yeah. not fully supported. So that's when we have to have a fallback somewhere. But I will put emojis. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh...
Mm-hmm.